All right, anthropology students, we're back with uh, uh, WESH uh, Lesson 4 over language. Um, and this is uh, back to uh, marked versus unmarked things. If you remember, we talked about marked versus unmarked when we were talking about the body, where uh, skin is unmarked for the orochiva, uh, but the interior is marked. Um, uh, when we have uh, uh, marked things, when we have unmarked things, it means we don't even notice it. Uh, when we have marked things, then it sticks out. So usually I start this session when I have a big classroom looking at me. I say, do you speak with an accent? Raise your hand if you speak with an accent. And sometimes people see through it and raise their hand. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but other times people sincerely think, yeah, no, I have an accent. I was, I was raised in Kentucky, so when I speak, I have an accent. Or I was, uh, you know, I'm actually originally from California or from Wisconsin or whatever. Um, you know, I grew up in New York, so when I talk, I have an accent. Um, and then slowly we sort of figure out, oh yes, wait a minute, everyone has an accent. Everyone speaks like they're, they're from somewhere else. And usually that's when I, uh, that, that comes about when I say, okay, um, has anyone ever lived in another part of the country? And so I'll have someone who says, yeah, 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 you know, I, I spent my high school years in uh, Mississippi or in uh, Georgia uh, and I say, well, did you have, did people say, oh, you have an accent? Yeah, they couldn't understand a thing I said. They were mean to me, et cetera, because of my accent. I said, what kind of accent is it? It's a Yankee accent. It's a Southwest Ohio accent, whatever. Um, so we can see that, uh, if you have, if you speak an unmarked speech variety for your local community, uh, then it's known as unmarked. Um, you sound like you're from around here and that means you have no accent. Whereas if you have a marked speech variety, if you're trying to speak like you're from Mississippi in Chicago, uh, then you sound like you aren't from around here. And that is the only way that we know you, quote unquote, speak with an accent. Um, so beyond language, of course, we use unmarked and marked to distinguish things that are ordinary, normal, or everyday from things that are unusual. Um, and we know that because of the, the previous thing. Now, where the sky is not blue... Uh, this is the next section. Our language does not limit us from perceiving new things and inventing words for them. We can always perceive new things and invent words for them. Airplane, of course, is the, the big example. No one knew what an airplane was prior to uh, uh, the Wright brothers. Uh, but once we have a word for something and start habitually using that word, it is much easier to see it. Once you know what an airplane looks like, when you see one, you say, hey, that's an airplane. Whereas prior to that, if you had never seen an airplane before and didn't know the word, you would say, what on earth is that giant bird, right? Uh, so we can see that language expands to meet needs. Uh, kinship terms, we already uh, mentioned this, uh, but uh, when we have um, cousin uh, uh, as a as a as a as a as a word to describe a relationship to someone that uh, may be much older than us or much younger than us or in a different generation, um, it really sort of makes it hard for us to identify what exactly the relationship is. You know, if we say aunt versus uncle, yeah, that's a person who is a sibling of a parent, uh, and aunt is female and uncle is male. You know, there's a lot more information packed into that. But when we have cousin, there's no gender, there's no uh, uh, sibling relationship, it's just a cousin. Um, and it's the same way with, with color terms. Once we can name a color, it's easier to notice it, and we often collapse color differences toward our modal version of a color, making it difficult to distinguish between different shades that match the same category. So I'm going to present a list now. This is uh, um, something that I do... Sorry, I don't think I had it pulled up. Uh, something that I do in class um, with all the colors. <clears throat> here, so you can see these colors here. There's kind of a, a, a pinkish one and a bluish one and a brownish one and then sort of an orangey one and a purpley one and a darker purpley one and then a, a brighter green and then a duller green and then sort of a, a dull blue. Um, and but I ask I don't give the the students these uh, names I say use your own name come up with your own name for these things um, and so they have to come up with you know uh, pink or light pink or lightish pink or they come up with like rouge or vermilion or puce or mauve you know and they have different kinds of words uh, and it's a fun little exercise and I really wish we could do it. Um, because these are all indeterminate colors. These are all colors that don't have solid names for them that everyone knows. It's very limited. 
Uh, and so then I go around and I pull the room and I figure out what people, um, how, how many um, words people have for these colors. And the, the words, um, the people who have the best words, uh, I sort of point out that they tend to be female. Uh, and the people who have the fewest words, the, the people who are doing the most sort of uh, greenish blue or bluish green, um, those tend to be male. And I say, what's going on with that? Why do we have, it seems like, uh, gendered um, uh, ability to identify colors? And so people have different ideas. And sometimes people say, oh, it's, uh, it's the, um, it's the uh, colorblindness, right? Male sex, uh, 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 sex-linked colorblindness. Um, you know, that's on the X chromosome, but it only gets expressed in, 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 um, in men. And I say, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, that's, that, that's pretty normal, but these aren't people, these aren't people who are colorblind. These are people who, who literally like can see colors, um, but looked at that color and said, uh, uh, pink and someone else said periwinkle, right? And the other person who said periwinkle was female. Um, and also sometimes people would say colors, uh, uh, you know, and they, they picked the wrong one, you know, it was supposed to be a, 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 a pinkish color and they picked one that says, uh, uh, you know, it's actually a greenish color. They're totally wrong, right? They just heard of this color. Um, and, and so they thought that was the color and it was totally wrong. And, and all the people who sort of suck in their breath and, and are, are really sort of, <gasps> can't believe you said that, you know, sort of, no, that's totally wrong. There tend to be women. And so I said, why, why do women know more about colors than men? Um, and one of the, uh, uh, people, uh, uh, thinks, oh, well, you know, women, uh, women wear makeup, you know, so women or, or women are naturally better at colors. Women are better at details, which is, you know, wrong. Um, you know, women and men are both equally good at details. Um, <laughs> it's just all of these, um, sort of fake reasons. Um, and, but, but then we talk about makeup and we say, why, you know, why do you need to know about makeup? Um. What does it do for you? Oh, you know, it's to get a mate. I'm like, not really, because mate would, would imply that men know this, and men don't know, right? Men don't know. Uh, you know, I show off my, my belt and my shoes, which are always brown, um, except when they're black. And if I wear a black shoes, then I have to wear a black belt. And if I wear brown shoes, I have to wear a brown belt. And that's it, right? You know, this is what I look like every single day. I've got red and I've got blue. Uh, and that's what I do. All I have to worry about is the shoes and the belt. Whereas, you know, um, occasionally I'll wear, um, you know, sort of red with orange and get in trouble. Um, so I don't wear that for my professional, uh, you know, professional attire. Um, because I really don't know. I can't tell that, that red and pink or something like that doesn't work or some kinds of green and pink, it's just too bright. Um, uh, but my wife knows these things. She knows what works and what doesn't work and why, because you can get fired over it if you are a woman. If you are a man, nobody cares. Um, and men really don't care. Uh, and men don't notice it. Um, you know, and you say, oh, who, who spends the largest percentage of their income in an office on their clothing? Uh, and it's the secretary. Uh, she doesn't make very much money, but she spends a fortune on um, making sure that she has the right purse to go with the right shoes, to go with the right scarf to go with the right uh, belt, you know, that they all sort of match. And then she has various different ensembles of that, uh, whereas the man just wears a navy suit uh, with a different colored tie every day. Black shoes, black belt, brown shoes, brown belt, right? So they don't spend as much of a percentage of their income. Um, and it's because you can get fired, right? If you, I always talk about the uh, professional women from my own field, you know, from, from, from academia, uh, who are, um, really high-powered expert researchers. And so they spend hours and hours and weeks and months and years in a lab, and they get it all worked out, and they do all the experiments, and they write all the papers, and then they're out to get a professional job teaching a uh, tenure track, uh, and a, a senior female uh, uh, professor takes them aside and says, find a thousand dollars and go out and buy two outfits, take a friend with you, and make sure everything matches, all right? Nobody did that to me. I think I spent like uh, one nineteen on a on a suit, on a black suit. <laughs> but no, women have to actually spend a lot of money, and it has to be uh, coordinated, um, and they have to do this to get a job. Because if they turn up and they are mismatched, they will be judged incompetent because they cannot match colors. And so they have to know this. This is information that you really have to know economically 
necessary information to get a job and keep a job that men don't have to. Men, men uh, uh, just uh, go through life blithely ignorant of these things. And it's women who are, who are maintaining these boundaries. It's other women who are judging uh, women. Uh, okay, so um, that's uh, 10 minutes.